I grew up in Miami in the 1970s and 1980s, and back then, the conventional wisdom about Miami Beach uh, was that the place's best years uh, were behind it. Uh, when I was a kid, basically, two kinds of people lived in Miami Beach, senior citizens and the muggers who preyed on them. <laughs> So real estate developers basically felt that by tearing down all these old buildings that reminded people of the glory days in the 1950s, that uh, that would be progress. They could just get people to, to move on into the future. So that's what they did. Um, but there was this small group of people who felt that the Art Deco buildings in Miami Beach were actually a hugely undervalued asset. And so they tried to save as many of them as they could, uh, led by this woman, Barbara Kapitman. They created an Art Deco district in Miami Beach and got it listed on the National Register of Historic Places. And the Art Deco district really became the heart of a new Miami Beach, one that attracted uh, artists and art dealers, fashion designers, models, photographers, uh, TV production, movie production, and Europeans who wanted a great winter beach vacation. So by the end of the 20th century, really what had happened was a complete cultural revolution that changed the way that we think about Miami Beach. I think we need a similar kind of cultural revolution here in New England. Uh, anyone want to hazard a guess about what these states have in common? <laughs> New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Maine, North Dakota, Connecticut. These are seven of the US states that are losing their population of young people the fastest. States on their way to geezerdom. And um, in New England, we really pride ourselves on attracting the smartest kids from around the world and giving them an education. But once they're done with that, we kind of don't care what happens next. So as a result, some of the kids who come here uh, to go to school wind up starting little software companies. Uh, some of them start little websites. Some of them develop new online payment systems. This is uh, Rich Aberman, a Boston College grad from just a couple years ago. He moved his company from Boston to Palo Alto last year, subsequently raised a million and a half dollars in funding, some of it from the founder of PayPal and they're off to the races. So basically, we just don't seem very invested in what happens to students after they've paid their last uh, tuition bill. And we're kind of perfectly fine if the federal government wants to send foreign students back home 30 to 60 days after they graduate. We don't do anything to stop it. So I say, enough with this. You know, I'm sick of it, enough. And to the web streaming audience, enough. <laughs> Just wanted to get them to stop doing email in the, the uh, overflow room. <laughs> Smart young people really are the great renewable resource here in New England. They are our undervalued asset. And we really just don't do enough for them. We need to build, uh, create better connections, break down walls for them. There are 227 colleges and universities in New England, 227, and we need to think differently about how we connect the students who are running around these campuses with startups, with big companies, with research institutions, how we help them create business of their own and, and chase their dreams. When we do this right, you get companies like iRobot, founded by two MIT grads and a professor of theirs. It's basically become the leading company in consumer and military robotics with about 500 employees. You get companies like Enernoc, one of the pioneers in smart grid technology, uh, now traded on the NASDAQ exchange, founded by two friends, right after they graduated from the Tuck School of Business uh, in Dartmouth. You get companies like Akamai up in the upper right-hand corner, MIT students and a mathematics professor. Interestingly, they competed in the MIT business co plan competition back in 1998. They didn't win it, uh, but a dozen years later, Akamai is worth $8 billion. Uh, the last company I want to mention, you get companies like A123 Systems. They were founded by an MIT prof and uh, a Babson College dropout in the uh, orange polo shirt there. Uh, they make lithium-ion batteries, and in 2009, they were the most successful IPO in the country. We're starting to see, I think, the early skirmishes in a cultural revolution here. And most of these initiatives are things that have just started over the last year or two. Uh, things like Dart Boston, uh, which is a really great networking series started by two Bentley College alums and a Barnard College alum. It's specifically targeted at 20-somethings who are either in the midst of starting their own business or are thinking about it. They webcast all of their events, which is really cool. Stay in MA was started by a venture capital firm in Boston. It's essentially a scholarship program that makes it possible for a college student to say, I want to go to a conference, I want to go to a workshop that may cost $50 or $100, but this program basically makes it free for them. 
Greenhorn Connect is a really incredible website started by some Northeastern uh, grads that uh, just is specifically for students who see themselves working in the startup space. MyTech's uh, Career Combine is a really inventive new take on the old-fashioned job fair. They do it every spring. And the last one is a project that I was involved in, uh, in helping get off the ground last, last fall called Innovation Open Houses. And the idea is basically to say to students, you know, we want to give you access to the coolest companies in the Boston area. So, you know, small groups of 20 or 30 students could visit HubSpot and Zipcar and Nuance and Terrafugia, the guys who are building the flying car, and just uh, meet the founders, ask them questions, get a tour of the company, and no strings attached. It wasn't a job interview. It wasn't an internship interview. Uh, we have about 700 students now that are members of the Innovation Open Houses Facebook group, but my hope is that eventually we'll have every student in Boston uh, as a member of that group and going to at least one Innovation Open House before we let them graduate. So all of these initiatives are good, but we need a lot more like them. I think we need people like you who are willing to go to a college campus and talk to students once a year or have groups of students into your companies. We just aren't doing it frequently enough. I think we've been letting people think about New England, and we've been thinking about New England the wrong way for the last couple hundred years. We're not this old region that is somehow mired in history, uh, but we're the youngest region of, in the world, um, and we're being pulled perpetually into the future by these young people with endless energy and really great ideas. It should not be possible for them to spend four years here and not, and come, in, not come into contact with some aspect of the innovation and the creative economy here. We just shouldn't let it happen. I was thinking yesterday, what could I do? You know, I'm going to be in front of this powerful, well-connected audience at TEDx Boston. How could I enlist you in this cultural revolution? I quickly set up this wiki at anyinnovation.com slash students just to list all the initiatives that I've talked about today so that you can help spread the word to students you know, to college professors you know. If there are other initiatives that should be on the list, I hope you'll add them. If your company is willing to have a visit from an entrepreneur's club or send some executives out to a campus, uh, you can add that to the wiki. It'd be really great, and we'll keep this thing uh, growing. Before I leave you, I want to give you a job description, and this is how we're going to think about New England once this cultural revolution is done. And just so that I know you're 100% uh, bought into this new job description, I want you to read it along with me. Uh, you ready? Including you people in the uh, overflow room. We attract the smartest young people from around the world, and we create opportunities and build big businesses here. It's just what we do. Thanks.